is a huge honor today to be interviewing two extremely amazing people. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for uh, uh, spending an hour with me today. Um, I'll just read your bio. Dr. Richard Offit, did I pronounce your name right? Richard yes. Offit is co-founder and chief development officer of the Synergy Dental Partners. Uh, Dr. Offit attended Davidson College in Davidson, North Carolina. He was elected Phi Beta Kappa while at Davidson. He earned his DDS degree from University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Isn't that where Michael Jordan went? Yeah, yeah, not to dental school, though. <laughs> <laughs> at UNC, he was elected to Omicron Kappa Epsilon and Who's Who at American Colleges and University. Dr. Offit attended the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, where he received special degrees in perio and endo. Is that right? You're yes, a periodontist and endodontist. I think you're the first one I've ever met who's a periodontist and endodontist. If you stay in school long enough, they give you everything. <laughs> Dr. Offit was a professor at the University of Pennsylvania upon the completion of his special degree. And um, Dr. Offit has practiced perio and implantology in Charlotte since 1982. He has devoted an extensive number of days to continued education in the areas of dental implants and perio. Dr. Offit is married to his wife, Becky, and like me, we're both crazy enough to have four grown children. And uh, did you survive your four children? I did, unscathed. Unscathed? I'm so lucky. I, uh, Brian, my third son, helps me with my podcast. And uh, um, Dr. Offit is a member of the ADA, American Academy of Perio, Academy of Osteo-Degration, and North Carolina Dental Society. And then his partner, Dr. Mustafa Shakan, did I say that right? Dr. Mustafa yeah. Shakan yeah. is a practicing general dentist in Charlotte, too. God, it seems like everybody new and hot and amazing is out of Charlotte. I mean, it's just really? one of dentistry's hotbeds. It really, really is. He graduated from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill with a BS in chemistry and received his DDS from UNC School of Dentistry. Dr. Shakan is an active member of the ADA, the NCDS, the Charlotte Dental Society. He has served as a member of the Board of Directors of the UNC School of Dentistry's Dental Alumni Association and Charlotte Dental Society, as well as being a member of the nationally recognized Spear Education Faculty Club and the SiracDoctors.com, which I uh, take credit for because that was originally started on Dental Town with Samir Puri. Yep. <laughs> and then those guys all migrated to the Sirac section at the Sirac Doctors, and I applaud them for that. Uh, Dr. Shikan is a contributing writer for Dental Economics. Um, which was my favorite magazine going all the way back to dental school. I thought Joe Blaze was amazing. Uh, Dr. Shikan and his wife reside in Charlotte with their two young children. So if the younger dentist learned anything, it was not to have four children. Is that, is that your biggest takeaway from me and Richard? That, that is correct. <laughs> Cut your <laughs> losses at two. Or are, are you going to stop at two or are you going to go for crazy and go for four? We're done. We're done. We're done. Cool. Okay, so where do you guys want to start? Do you, did you want to start with uh, with Synergy Dental Partners? Because I, I liked what you were talking about. What uh, you know, what is the current state of dentistry for the independent practitioner? I mean, when you're on, when you go talk to a room full of dentists, you know, you don't talk for ten minutes, and they're afraid of, um, they're afraid of corporate dentistry. They're seeing dental offices open up that are part of chains that go, you know, from C to signing C. They see the dental companies just getting bigger and bigger and bigger they see dental labs getting bigger and i think they feel smaller and less powerful and less control over their destiny and it looks like you're addressing that and what are the forces facing dental practices the dental supply industry cost control management overhead but more importantly i want to start with how do we individual dentists uh, preserve the status of an independent practitioner or do you think in 20 years we're all going to be working at mcdonald's anyway well, I hope that that's not the case. You know, we think that um, there are lots of things that the dentist can do to, to help control their destiny and preserve the independent dental practitioner. I do think we have to recognize what the forces are that we're seeing. You know, dentistry, you know, forever from 1981 to 2005 had a steady increase in, in practitioner salary. You know, and basically it was a 79% increase. Um, once we hit 2008, GP income dropped to $190,000 from a peak in 1981 of $215,000. And then, you know, what we've always seen is as GDP rises, so does dentist income because spending increases. Uh, since 2012 is the first time that we have seen GDP rise, but dental incomes drop. And in fact, in 2013, we saw dental incomes, average dental incomes drop to $181,000, which is the first time that we've seen numbers like that since 1996, 97. Um, so there are definitely forces working could, against could us. I, could I be, um, 
that was so profound what you just said. Will you repeat those numbers again? I just I just want everybody to hear those because that you said from 1981 to what the numbers went up 79 percent. Would you would you just from, repeat those numbers again? Yeah, from 1981 to 2005, dental incomes rose 79 percent um, to a peak of 215,876 dollars. Um, when we hit 2008 recession, um, you know everything kind of went went out the window. By 2009, average GP income dropped to $191,000, um, and then it even got worse. You know, typically, um, as GDP rises, so does dental spending, and so does practitioner salary. Um, in 2010 to 2013 was was the first time that we've seen a rise in GDP, but we've seen a decrease in average practitioner salary to $181,000, and that's the first time we've seen those numbers since 1996-97. That is amazing. In fact, I I, I was stumped. Um, the, the American Dental Association has an economist, and he wrote an article called Attorneys, Dentists, and Lattes. Did you get to see that on the ADA website? I did not. And uh, he, he was basically saying that from the 2008 meltdown, every industry sector has recovered except attorneys, dentists, and coffee shops. And uh, yeah, we, we haven't recovered. So so do you, do you think we're um, from 2013 to now? Do you think we're still sliding down, or do you think it's stabilized? Or I think you know from from what we've seen, and you you don't see very many statistics that have come out since 2013. You know, obviously, it takes a little while for them to to digest the numbers and come out with the studies. But um, from what I'm seeing, it seems like we've plateaued in dental spending, um, which would sound fine except for the fact that um, we're continuing to see an increase in the cost of delivering care. Um, another crazy statistic, if you look at since 1985 to 2013, the cost of delivering care rose 297%. But the cost of infl inflation, the cost of goods and services across the board only rose 114%. Um, I think that's one of our, our biggest problems that we're facing is cost of delivering dental care is rising. So even if spending stays flat or spending increases at a small percentage, um, our problem is how much it costs us to, to place an implant, to place a crown, uh, to do prophies. You know, the, the cost of that is increasing too much. So um, I think if you continue in the, in the normal path that we've always continued on um, and don't pay attention to your numbers and don't pay attention to how your practice is set up, I do think we're probably going to see a, a steady slide in, in dental incomes. I mean, how hard I talk to dentists all, every day all over the country um, for our company. And and, and, that, and, that, com and that company is Synergy, Synergy Dental, Dental. Yeah. Which, is, which is the SynergyDentalPartners.com. The yes. SynergyDentalPartners.com. Okay. And we'll, we, we, we explain to our viewers what that company is and then say what you're going to say. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Synergy Dental Partners is a um, national group purchasing organization. Essentially, what we have done is um, we band independent practitioners together all across the country um, in hopes of being able to leverage their buying power together um, to negotiate price savings on consumables. Our core competency is saving on consumable dental supplies. So what we're looking and, at... And explain is, consumable dental supplies. That doesn't include labs. That's not labs. That's that's well, supplies and press materials. Correct. That that's that's the core competency, which is basically anything that you use and throw away in a dental office. Um, impression materials, composite bonding agent, cotton rolls, um, you name it. But we also have partnerships in other things that help impact dental dental overhead, like uh, lab companies. We have two partnerships in there. Um, we have a partnership with an implant company. Um, we have a partnership with Rotary Diamond Provider, um, Comet USA, BioHorizons, Prudental Dental Lab, DDS Lab, um, so, and, and our major um, supply provider is uh, is Darby Dental Supply. Um, so what we what we do is we take the buying power of our thousand members across the country, negotiate um, price savings agreements with our distributors, um, and try to help control overhead. And you have a thousand dentists. Uh, probably a, a just 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 north of the thousand dentists uh, that's well, of, of offices. Yeah, offices that have asked us to help them since we started the company. Yeah, Howard. I, the, what I was getting to say it, um, is, I talk with dentists all over the country every day. I mean, I um, I'm a full time practitioner, but we we run Synergy Dental. Uh, uh, you know, 
on, as a bolt-on operation. And I talk with them every day, and I talk with their receptionists, and you know, trying to waiting for the doctors. And when they say they ask me, they go, "Well, what do you, what do you, uh, what, what's your company do?" And I go, "Well, we're we're a group purchasing organization that helps dentists save money on dental supplies." And and to every single office says, "Boy, oh boy, do we really need help there?" So it's 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 one of these things, and and that's right in our sweet spot. That's our core competency is helping offices save money. Um, but it's always interesting because it doesn't matter where you call around the country. The things that Dr. Shakan has said bears so is so true that that the the spending on dentistry is fairly level. The cost of delivering the care is is increasing, and and uh, which would include your your two by twos, your cotton rolls, as well as your your dental hygienists and assistants and business office people. All those costs are increasing. And, and we're having fairly flat revenue growth. So as, as those two lines converge, the dentist finds himself in between. And I think that, that, that part of our whole, uh, our whole proposition is to, for, for, for dentistry, um, both for ourselves and for the Synergy Dental Company, is how do we preserve the practice, the individual practitioner, how do we help pres- keep it so that the, w- those lines don't converge to the point that the dentist can't be in business? And part of that is, is dentists have to get learn excellence in every aspect of their business. Whatever they choose to do in their practice, whether it's uh, bonding or whether it's implants, whatever, they got to get become excellent in those services. But they also have to gain competency in dealing with all of the different aspects of running a business. Very few dentists have office managers and that can handle it like there are medical colleagues where they have a, a whole staff of people that handles HR, handles their retirement plans, handles their lab, their uh, outsourcing of their lab work. Dentists have to gain competency in all those areas and they have to be excellent in what they're doing because that's the only chance they have or we have, Dr. Shikon and I are both in private practice, that we have of being able to have a sustainable business model. It becomes very important. So a lot of what we talk about all day long with dentists all over the country is how do you do that? And the one aspect of that that we bring to the table is in saving money on consumable supplies. And that's what Dr. Shikan has been writing about in dental economics and, and uh, web, web, uh, posting on their, their websites and what have you. So it, it, it becomes a that's the dialogue, Howard. That's the dialogue we have to have with dentists is how do you do that? What does it take for you to be competent to be able to survive in the private practice? Okay, so you say you have north of a thousand members and I don't know how many of our listeners are are your clients, but you're you're talking to several thousand dentists right now. So they're all individuals multitasking on a commute to work. Um, What, so try to, I I, want to, you know, try to paint a picture of how does this dentist drive to work? How does she know her supplies are not in line? She, she doesn't know what the other eight dentist supplies are in the medical dental building. And when I, when I ask, when I ask him at dinner, like, like I'll go to dinner and I'll talk to a guy and I'll say, well, what is your sub- sundry supply? And he'll say, oh, you know, I, I, I think it's somewhere between like four, four or six or seven percent. I'm like, God, the difference between four and seven, that's, that, that, oh, that, that's, that's, that's a right, huge, how, how, that's how a huge take, variance, especially, especially that, in a million dollar practice. You take that to the bottom line and you can educate your kids. So I mean, what? So what should supplies be and what should lab be? What should labor be? How, how does this, she, she's listening to you right now. How, how is she supposed to know her supplies are out of line and you could help her? You know, ideally we want your supply. We would nationally, I think you look at the average supplies are about 6%. If you can, if you can keep supplies at 6%, you're in a good spot. I think you see supplies getting closer to seven and 8%. Um, and like you said, some guys will say, well, you know, it's 1%, 2%. That's not a big deal. You know, we, the, the crazy answer we hear from um, so, several dental supply companies reps is, you know, it, you're talking about 2% on your overhead. Well, what you need to do is you just need to increase how much dentistry you do. And and then it'll all take care of itself. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that. And I, I've never seen a dental supply rep show me how to increase um my production by two, three percent. But you know, if I, if I could increase my production at will, I think it'd be a great thing. But you know, what we're saying is, you know, guys do have um, do have these percentages that are that are getting north of that five, six percent. 
you know, what our proposition is, is, is let's give you an opportunity to get the lowest possible pricing that you can. Um, the original thing that you were asking about is um, how does, you know, Dr. Jones um, in anywhere America know what his supplies are and that his supplies are higher than anybody. The biggest thing that's going on in dentistry is dentistry is tremendously fragmented. Um, the fragmented nature of dentistry um, even gets mentioned on a lot of the K-1 statements of a lot of the bigger companies as being a key to their profitability. Um, why we, a big reason why we started Synergy is I, I have an office right beside another general dentist. I was ordering from one of the bigger companies. He was ordering from one of the bigger companies. We were ordering almost the exact same stuff. He had an invoice laying on his table one day, and I brought my invoice in. And let's say we're ordering Imprint 3. I was paying you know, $40 less on Imprint 3 than he was. That's because Shakan's a meaner man. That's right. Um, and you know, he I was paying more on bonding agent than he was. But there, it, it, the statement that that it told us is that the fragmentation across dentistry shows us that you know you can have five dentists within a block of each other all ordering from the same company or even very similar companies all doing the same volume uh, of ordering and they're all paying different prices and we're like you know that is the the one key and, piece and, and an mba school i went i got my mba from arizona state university it's because um this fragmented market does not have transparency in its prices so everybody, everybody's paid a different rate, and oh, and, and the Amer and the American culture is in America they don't like to haggle and argue over price. You go to some countries, it's culture. Like if I just drive a hundred miles south of my house and go into Mexico, they're born and raised to argue over prices. And a lot of Americans they they don't like that. They say it with women car dealers. Women don't like to go on a car lot and argue and debate about price, but your cousin Earl might love it. And so if one dentist is really on top of his Patterson's rep, they'll get lower prices than someone who's just a nice guy and says, "How? hey, how are you doing? How's your new baby? Is that, do you agree with that? Absolutely. I definitely agree with that. And then, and that's kind of what we do is, you know, we present guys the opportunity. We're going to negotiate these pricing points for you. We're going to get you a lower overall situation than you can get yourself unless, you know, I mean, there are some very, very aggressive guys who will go in there and they will beat this rep up and beat that rep up. And maybe they are able to get, negotiate good pricing. Um, we're looking to, to protect the guys who aren't necessarily doing that. You know, the, these are the guys who want to practice dentistry, want to practice a high level of, de level of dentistry, and don't have time to necessarily pay somebody to go through six different catalogs and call six different companies and order products from six different places to get the lowest possible price. What we try to do is present you an easy opportunity to get the lowest possible price. Howard, let's let's flip the paradigm around a little bit. Let's look at the story from from the side of corporate dentistry where they that is what they do for their corporations. I mean, they negotiate price point. They take it out of the doctor's hands. The doctor doesn't have to do any of this this business transaction thing. So what happens as a result of that? As a result of that leverage that they have, the, the operating costs of the corporate dental office are so vastly lower than our private practice doctor that, that the, our doctors are starting at a disadvantage from the get-go because their cost structure is vastly different. That's one of the things that we have to look at and address in private practice is how do we work on the, on the cost basis for everything we do, we have to lower the cost of doing business because, the, as we talked about earlier, the lines are converging. They're converging. The cost, the the, the, the overhead, and is is converging with the with the total. What, what, do, you, what do you think? I, I, when I talk about corporate dentistry, I always talk about Heartland and Pacific. Yeah, I, exactly. I think, me, me as well. Because I, I think those are the two best ran corporates. I mean, oh. when. A lot of people say corporate dentistry. And, you know, I, I feel sorry for corporate dentistry because there are some chains that are just embarrassing. But 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 I think Rick Workman of Harlan and Steve Thorne of Pacific do a damn. They, I think they do the best job. But yeah. what what do you think they're paying for supplies? What what do you uh, think their percent of revenue goes to so, Sundries? I think they're probably right at about you know three and a half four percent probably three and a half four percent, and that's about what. When I, with an MBA, am looking in dental offices, that's about the dentist variance. 
three yes. and a half, four percent. I mean, yes. one one month right. they'll be five, next month they'll be eight and a half. I'm like, yeah, God, your in your variance from month to month is their total supply bill. Yeah, and, so, and so, are, so 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 I'm going to play devil's advocate because I know what these guys are listening. First thing they're going to ask you is, okay, well, how how do you get paid? How how are you making money? How do I join this? If I go to thesynergydentalpartners.com, what do I do? I sign up. Is it a membership? Is it $1,000 a year? Well, how does it work? Here's the deal. Here's the deal, Howard. Our, our basic premise that we started, this is uh, that Dr. Chakan came to me five, uh, more than five years ago with this idea of, for Synergy Dental. And our premise is that we, the Synergy is a free service. It is free to the doctor. Um, it costs them nothing to save the money. I talk with doctors every day and I tell them, I say, look, look, check us out. Check us out. See what's up. If we can't save you money, don't use us. Right. It's a pretty simple proposition. If we can't save you money, don't use us. Now, in the five years we've been running Synergy or four and a half years of been running Synergy, I've not found that situation yet. But I tell doctors that that's that's the key to it. So Synergy is a is a free service to the dentist. Now, we do get paid an administrative fee by the vendor. And that's Darby? Uh, and or that's that's Darby for supplies? Our then, vendor part, yes, our vendor part. And then, part. And then you said BioHorizon for implants? Uh, Comet USA for rotary instruments. Prudential. When you say rotary uh, instruments, you mean burrs? Diamonds burrs. and bars, that's right. Yep. So he's using fancy words. Rotary instruments. Okay, Comet for diamonds and burrs. Yeah. And I get I, I I don't know why that that when I heard rotary instruments that that tricked my brain. Um, I, it took you're me right. forever to finally process that. They Comet used to throw that num that word at me all the time, and I was like, "Don't you mean burrs?" And, and Comet is a German burr company, right? Correct. Comet and weren't they Comet an original? Were, when when uh, Peter Brasler started Brasler Burrs, wasn't Comet the original supplier for Brasler? Right. No, you're exactly right. Comet, Comet made every Brassler burr ever made. And then Comet and Brassler split when Comet went, uh, was able to finally start selling burrs directly in the United States. Every Comet burr is still made in the same factory in Germany. Brassler, you know, right or wrong, if you, if you order Brassler burrs, they're going to come in five different packets because they're made by five different companies now. And, um, not, and not to throw my fellow Americans under a bridge, but I have been in a hundred dental manufacturing companies in six continents and I, i'm telling you the dental manufacturing companies in germany and japan are a civilization ahead of the ones in america you know I they're, mean, they're, i mean i mean i'm sorry america but it's just true i mean think, think of their cars think of mercedes-benz and audi and porsche and lexus and then think of chevy and chrysler i mean i mean those german manufacturing plants i mean Holy moly, are you you feel like you're in Star Wars? Comet's the largest, I'm sorry, Comet's the largest burr and dime manufacturer in the world. Yep. And yeah, okay, so what are your other partners? Darby? Uh, Darby's out of New York, is in that Manhattan? Darby's buried at uh, is based out of Jericho, New York. Jericho, uh, New York? Yes. And who's the guy who's the guy that runs that? That uh um Jeff Bailey. Jeff Bailey, there's another guy. Daly. D A L Y, I think is the is the Jeff Daly, D A L Y. Yeah, is the is the overall um who's the other guy married to the blonde um um i'm not sure okay but know. anyway so that so so bio horizons that's a in a georgia uh, birmingham birmingham atlanta who alabama. are your, uh, alabama, alabama, birmingham, birmingham, alabama. alabama and who are your other partners darby bio horizon comet who else we have, we have two labs on board prudental out of california uh, prudental prudental p-r-u-d-e-n-t-a-l um, and then DDS Lab out of Florida. Now, are those um, um, shipping centers for China? Are those uh... um, Prudential is one hundred percent made and operated in the United States. Uh, DDS Lab does have some operations in China. Um, so the 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 uh, the opportunity that we present people is obviously the lowest cost that we can. Um, if you want only your stuff made out of um, the United States, then Prudential is the way to go. If cost is the number one piece that you're looking for, while still getting good control and FDA regulation, DDS Lab is a, is a is a good opportunity. Yeah, I was a, I was at a uh, modern dental lab in uh, Shenzhen, China, 
where they have like 4,000 employees and these uh, UPS trucks would pull up a couple times a day. And I was looking at the incoming boxes. It was like almost all the labs I'd ever heard of in my life. Yeah. And they were, you know, they're collecting them in your city. Then they're sending them to China and then they get them back in like four days and then they repackage them and send them to you. <laughs> but anyway, okay. So, um, so go, 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 so go through. So I, I go, I, I go to the synergy dental partners.com and basically what you're doing is you're doing a volume discount. So you're buying stuff and saying, okay, obviously if I buy one Barbie doll, it's 10 bucks. But if I buy a thousand Barbie dolls, I'm going to get them for seven bucks a piece. That's basically well, what no, you're no, doing. Right. We, we don't, uh, uh two things i wanted to mention one there, there are a couple other partners we use garrett garrison um is one of our partners with um with matrix bands um and composite products um kettenbach usa um which is a, a great um producer of impression material bite registrations things like that um is, is another one of our partners that we, we definitely wanted to listen and we also use a company um that we formed a partnership dental card services so we, we launched synergy card services through dental that. dental what what was the last one? Uh, de dental card services. Dental card services. Yep. Which well, dental card services is a is a credit card processor oh, okay. that, fo that focuses on on the dental industry. And then we have some consulting partners. Um, Dr. Stan Mikulski with Mikulski Coaching um, is, is one of our um, our consulting partners. He's an in office dental office consultant. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Tell him I want to podcast him. Uh, we would love to. We yeah, I, I would he, love he, that. He's, he's quite good. He's quite good. The, how how we've we've known the man for years, and what he is very good at is taking a doctor from X to X plus ten percent in growth of his production. And he his name Stan has, what? Mikulski. Spell. He has the data to show it. M I C H. M I C H. A L S K I. A L S K I. Yeah. Is and he he's Polish got the, or Polish? Yeah, I, think, Polish. Yeah, I think I think he's Polish. <laughs> he's, he's got he's got the, the the statistical data to back up his efforts and he, across his the, the uh, across his clientele. So he's interesting. But but he one of his one of his key areas is controlling cost, and that's how we that's the interface that we have with Mikulski Consulting. Is he consults with the doctors, and a big thrust of it is yes, increasing your production, but controlling your costs. And he's a dentist too. Yeah. Yes. Does he still practice or just consult? He still a little bit, a little bit, little yeah. bit now. Ah, find his uh, consulting company. And then, uh, the, and then, and kind of back to where we were talking about, you know, what, what, what is the model? What does it cost? You know, a dentist pays us nothing, and we also have no contracts with the dentist. We don't force you to commit to volume. You can buy one cotton roll, or you can buy every product that you use in your office from us, um, and it never costs you anything. Some companies. We'll ask for a monthly fee. I mean, group purchasing organizations um, are, are plentiful. Nothing happens in a vacuum in this country. Um, if anybody sees something that they think is an opportunity, they'll do it. But a lot of, there are other companies that are, are asking for annual fees, monthly fees. There's even a company that's asking for 2% um, of gross revenue um, to be a, a, part of the, a part of the GPO, um, which I think is kind of cool. Howard, think about that. You're going to give up 2% of your gross revenue? Take, I mean, I, I just can't understand that. You know, the, 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 the goal is to, to, uh, to save money, it's, and, and that just seems like such a giveaway that, that you're behind before you start. But, I mean, that's their model. The okay, okay. I, I want to I I take this in a different direction. It, it's okay. easy for a bunch of dentists to all get around to a campfire and say that uh, the um, distributors are charging us too much money. When I go talk to the distributors, when, when I talk to a Patterson rep or a Benco rep or a Burkhart rep, they tell me their side of the story too. They, and and let, let's talk about, because this is dentistry uncensored, and when I go into lecture, I've never gone in there trying to sugarcoat. I've never gone in there trying to make a friend. I always thought to myself, you know, if I love and respect you, I'm going to tell you, you know, that this is what you're doing wrong. They say they go into a group practice and three dentists, they all have to have three different kinds of gloves. And right. that they use three different kinds of bonding agents. And, and, and when they go in there and say, you know, I could lower your supply bill if you just were kind of reasonable. And they, they just tell me, can you talk about the horrible stuff that the dentists do, that, that, how they are their own worst enemy? I mean, they're not just getting the lowest, the best price because they're not the type of person who likes to haggle. I mean, I, when I meet someone, the last thing I want to do is haggle or argue with them. I mean, life's just too short to do that. But, but what are dental offices doing to themselves 
that's raising their supply bill, even with their high cost uh, Patterson dealer? Well, I think you're, I think you're you're totally dead on right that you can lower your your cost if you would standardize. If you would all use the same materials and then you can buy things in bulk, um, that definitely works. You know, if you look at the medical model, GPOs have been very prevalent in in medicine for a long time. Um, that's the model. They go to the manufacturer. Everybody uses um, you know cotton rolls from Johnson and Johnson. Everybody uses tongue depressors from Johnson and Johnson. That's what the deal is. You know, we looked at it and and we look at it in a different way. We're we're a business as usual kind of company. We want you to be able to use the different products that you want to use. If there's five guys in your practice and you want to use five different impression materials, go for it. You know, but you but you but no, you you should you should tell them to do both. You should tell them to buy group practice from you, but be smart about it too. Because I've seen in my 20 years, I've seen a dental assistant break down and cry three times because she can't keep straight. You know, she's in a group practice and they keep throwing her in different rooms and you're using this bonding agent and he's using this bonding agent. She sets up your tray, forgetting that you're the one dentist. Who, and I, I think the assistants are tortured in group practices, uh, especially by the time they get to three docs. I mean, I'm surprised they're not drinking Listerine by noon. And, and, and if they standardize it, the assistants' lives would be easier and their costs would come down. I mean, I, I think you should advise. I, I think with these guys sending in for three different bonding agents, you should, you know, forward their call to Dr. Phil. Well, you know, the interesting thing about that, what you're talking about is kind of an internal internal management uh, dynamic. What, what, we, what we are offering the doctors is you can have anything you want and you can have it at the synergy price. If you want five impression materials based on different applications, perfect, but save money on all five. What they have their internal operation do, that's totally up, up, up to them. We, you know, we, we, we had some discussions with a company that, that very prominent company, um, uh, guys, a virtual, virtual company that, that sells things online. And they looked us and told us that they feel that they could force dentists to buy particular products uh, based on just price point alone. And, and that, that they could, more or less mandate that. And we tried to explain to them, you know, over a cup of coffee that, that dentists are unique individuals. If, if all, if six of us sat down and prepared the same tooth, we probably would do it differently. If we all prepared a first molar, we'd use different stuff, right? And then that's the beauty of dentistry is that, you, is that one size doesn't fit all. And, and, and as long as you're in a independent practice, you can prepare that tooth any way you want it and use any materials you want you just need what we're asking doctors to do is is be efficient so that you can survive in that model. Be efficient, and and part part of that is is, is what I started out on with excellence across a wide number of disciplines. You know, we and, use what I what I used to do is I used to refer to a higher authority, someone that's not in our group practice, like like Gordon Chris and a CRA or some you know something like that. And I'd say, look, we are all going to use one impression material. And then we're not going to beat the chunk, the chest that I'm older, you're younger, I'm the owner, you're an employee, blah, blah, blah. But we have to agree on certain things. But I've noticed that every corporate dental um, deal, and when I talk about corporate, 90% of the corporate dental practices I know of are like four to five or six or 10 locations. You know, just a handful are in different states. But when I, when I go lecture to uh, a corporate dental office that's got you know, 15 locations in Louisville or something, you know, that, but, but I've noticed that all those corporate dentists have gone, they have got them, everybody to agree on a, a type of glove and type of impression material, that, but the one that everybody gives up on is burrs. Yeah. And, and well, I get that. I get that. Cause I'm a dentist and I mean, I, I, I use more burrs on a stupid little crown prep than, than I need to. But if, if someone came in and took half my birds away, I, I'd, I'd pout. Right. Well, you know, that, that, but that that is true. What you're saying, I think, is exactly true. Is that is that in those models, they do try to standardize what everybody uses. What what, what our contention is is that if mo most all of our most all of our clients are well over a thousand offices, most of these guys are and ladies are ones and twos and three doctor practices. You know, in one location. Sometimes they'll have two locations with three doctors. So. So they're they're not they're not in the world of where they are 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 having to standardize their product their 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 uh, supplies, and that's the beauty of it. As I said, so our point is 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 what 
is if we can help you do that more efficiently with more cost control and not have to change your products, how you work it out in the office logistically is, is, is kind of an internal issue. Um, so uh, we're trying to level the playing field. We're trying to level the playing field for the independent practitioner with the Heartlands and the uh, Aspen Dentals in the world. You know, we want to get you very similar pricing to what these guys are getting. Um, and I think what the other aspect, what you're talking about, I think it is very valid. If you, if you do have multiple doctors and you can standardize things, I think you can definitely save more. We feel that's kind of on the consulting side of it. We're not trying to really, um, and probably we should do more of it, but we're not trying to necessarily advise you on how to operate your practice. Um, we're trying to prevent, present to you an avenue to save while you're operating your practice in the manner that you are. Now, you know, through Mikulski and other guys that we work with, those are the guys that will advise you on how to how to even ramp up your savings. But even, let, even, let's you know. let's talk about specifics, like um, like. Polyvinyl siloxane and pressed material. I mean, isn't polyvinyl siloxane, polyvinyl siloxane, polyvinyl siloxane? I mean, can you really have a Nike and Adidas polyvinyl siloxane? You know, I'm I'm probably the worst person in the world to ask this question to because I've used imp you know 3M's imprint since I got out of school. Imprint has gone imprint, imprint one, imprint two, imprint three, imprint four. They all behave a little differently. Some's a little more viscous. Some's a little less viscous. Um, and so those things operate differently in, in doctors' hands. You know that as well as I do. Um, you know, I like, you know, we're on imprint four. I use imprint two light body and imprint four heavy body. Um, and it's because imprint two light body has a different viscosity, so it operates differently in my hands. Maybe that's just in my head, but that's what, that's what works. That's what I put in somebody's mouth, and it comes out, and the impression's right. I get imprint three. I don't like how it is. I get a tear in here. You know, so from a chemical perspective, PVS is PVS. From the nuance perspective, it is not. Yeah, I'm kind of different that way. I've 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 used polyether impergum for 20 years, and uh, and and that was because my next door neighbor, when I was in the sixth grade, Kitty Anderson. When I was in the sixth grade, he was already using impergum. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I've been on that forever. But okay, but let, let's go to titanium. Same question. I mean, you have you have a deal with BioHorizon. I mean, um, titaniums, 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 titanium. I mean, does an osteoblast, an osteocyte, really know if that titanium is made by Noble BioCare or Megagen or BioHorizon? I'll turn that to my surgical. You're going to default. You're going to default on that. Yeah, I think if if you have you know four blocks of titanium all you know, all cut from the same source, you're right. Uh, uh, titaniums, titaniums, titanium. But I think. What makes the difference in titanium is the surface are the surface characteristics of the particular implant. So doctors are going to are going to to so opt for an implant system that they one can get predictable high quality results with, um, and hopefully that that uh, that that is a that that's the goal. So I don't know you know you you it takes a it takes a lot to shake a surgeon. From one implant company to another, it takes a lot. Of, it, uh, it has to have had a lot of issues because the loyalty of doing of being able to deliver a predictable outcome day in and day out surgically is 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 very very important. Um, and it's kind of like Dr. Shakan said with the um, with the impression material was that I mean listening to him describe the different. Now I haven't taken an impression art in in 30 years, right? We use it for a crown, but more than that. And so the deal is is that um, you're, no way are you gonna you're gonna force him into a box. Either of you guys, both of you are, are, are you know you're you're you use what you use. So I, I think that that flexibility is important. But but so so titanium isn't just titanium, and I think I think the surface characteristics are very important. You know. Um, uh, well, you're, and, well, let me let me rephrase the question. Um, why did you pick um, BioHorizon? That that's the one that um, actually uh, Carl Mish was involved with in the beginning. Yeah, correct. And yeah. Uh, and I, I got my fellowship at the mission soon. I think Carl's, I think Carl Mish and uh, um, Dr. Brandmark are just legends. Um, why why did you go with uh, Carl Mish's uh, BioHorizons? We had a, we had a relationship with with the people at BioHorizons, and we talked to them. They were interested in in uh, this as a possibility. They offer outstanding products. I use their products every day. Um, and, and I think how some of this started for us as we approached vendors that that, <laughs> that sold the things that we like. 
um, you know, that, that, that we use that we're comfortable with. I talk to doctors every day about, you know, bone grafting sockets and barrier membranes and, you know, both for Synergy and for my private practice in Charlotte. And, and, uh, and, and I think that, that it's, it, that I'm very comfortable offering, you know, that product line. I've used all of their products. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, it is a, it's a solid company based in Birmingham. It's a great story. Uh, their, their corporate culture is good, you know, um, and there are others. I'm not saying it's exclusively, you know, the, 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 all those are exclusive to them. But but for we, we, we like the company. I had a relationship there. We like the uh, we like the people that run it. They were willing to uh, willing to take a chance with us when when we were um, had a lot of good ideas, but not a lot on the table. And so we're very we, we appreciate that relationship very much with that company. Can, can you give an example of how much uh, someone would save if they're buying, you know, five implants from BioHorizon by themselves versus if they were buying them through you? Well, first, first, it, it's a, it's a, it, the, you have to understand the paradigm here a little, a little bit. We don't touch the doctor's product, nor do we touch their money. When what we do is we negotiate contracts for pricing. So the, do, the doctor still buys his implants from BioHorizons. He doesn't buy them from Synergy. And w- the, the, the typical discount for, for a BioHorizon implant is about 30%. If, that's they're, what we if they're going through you, they save yeah, 30%. That, that, yeah, if, yeah that's, about the, that's about the number. No, that, that's, that's huge. That's, that's just amazing. What do you think about it? It's $120 off a $400 implant. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a, you, you can start giving people implants if you want so, to. So, so here, we go, here we go, Howard. So, so I, I, as I told you, I talk to doctors a lot and uh, I ask them, you know, because they're, they're minimizing the effect of savings. So lots of doctors will minimize that effect on their, on their lives and their practice. So I ask them, well, I go, if you were walking down the street, and you saw a $5 bill laying there all by itself, nobody's around you, nobody's there, you're by yourself, would you pick the $5 bill up? Or would you walk on by? Should I was I've born in a bar a in doctor. Kansas, I'd pick a up a doctor. penny. No, I have, I've not met a doctor that said he'd walk on by the $5 bill. So then I tell him, well, why don't you buy your dom- diamonds through Comet USA? You save $5 a diamond. It's that simple. It's not a hard, this isn't a, this isn't a sophisticated business. We just save you money. Well, let's look at, you know, like you were saying, let's look at the Comet deal. Just, you know, just to throw percentages out there. I mean, you can save 60 percent on your diamonds. You know, I mean, that is a crazy amount of money um, on on something that you use every single day. And and you can save 15 percent on your car insurance. If every (laughs) if every time you if every time you wreck your car, you throw it in reverse and get the hell out of that scene. That's right. That's right. That's, that's right. my no, advice. Just drive away from every accident. You'll save a lot of money run. on your hit runs are the way. Hit runs are the way to live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So, so then, is do you have any interface? I mean, is there um is there something um uh, like like if I go to uh Ryan, pull up uh the synergydentalpartners.com. I mean, can I order my supplies on your website? You cannot. What what we essentially do is you you interface with us initially. You, you you sign a membership. You sign on to our membership forms. Um, Dr. Offit deals a lot with um, all of the day to day signing up of members, um, and he enrolls you with all of our vendor partners. And you're coded as a Synergy member. When you're coded as a Synergy member, you automatically get the pricing. Now we have specific inside reps that that are assigned to Synergy clients that we try to get you with, so you can co- contact our Synergy reps. You call them, you order your supplies from them, you get the synergy pricing, they invoice you, you pay them. Okay. So if you fill out the form, Howard, like, like you're looking at, if you fill that out and you submit it, it comes to me. Well, I'm sending it to you right now. Okay. And then and then you have to- I'm a to multitasker. Stop. So, and you have to say, you'll accept my phone call tomorrow because I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. And- okay. Uh, um, and, and, and Ryan, I Ryan email, email that to uh, Richard. Uh, it's Richard Offit, right? Right. right. And uh, Mustafa Musta Shakan. Mustafa Shakan. Mustafa. Mustafa Shakan. So were you always teased when, uh, when you were in high school and Shaka Khan had the number one uh, hit album out? I got albums in my locker. Vinyl. Yeah, there'd be vinyl sitting in my locker. From Shaka Khan? 
Absolutely. Oh my God! I, what was her big song? Was she was with, with Rufus? Wasn't it? She was with her big one with Rufus. Yeah, I think so. Oh no. my God! She was. She was the. I said it to both. Okay, and then, so, then to Robert and Jan. So okay. we're gonna get we're gonna get your information. I'm gonna get your information tomorrow. Uh, I'll look at it tomorrow, and and what I'll do is I'll send you then a couple of emails that that give you all of our vendors all of the vendor contacts and all of the reps at each of the vendors, okay? Then later in the day or the next day, I'll call you. I'll say, hey, this is Richard Offit. I'm calling to see if I can help you answer any questions, anything about Synergy. And I'll, and if the doctor will come to the phone, which sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, um, I, I have a conversation with them. And, and, I, and I tell them, because I, I'm the interface with all the, all the new doctors that call us. And so then we have a conversation and I get I get their offices established with our vendors and then you start saving money. It's not that hard. Um, not that. So whoopers of the dentists are like me. I mean, OK, so I, I got out of school in 87. I hired my dental assistant, Jan, and she's still there 28 years later. And she uh, the only difference between me and her. She looks 10 years younger. I've never ordered any supplies in 28 years. I mean, I, I, I have, I, I mean, what person of the dentist are like me that has an assistant do all that versus what person of the dentist are actually involved with ordering their supplies themselves? Like, well, like when you said you're going to call me and have a conversation, yeah. well, I, I would just hand the phone to Jan. I, I wouldn't even know what, right. I, I wouldn't, that, couldn't answer one question. And that's perfect because you've empowered her to make decisions on your behalf. And what person of the dentist do in that? Your best, in your best interest. I have I've talked to many offices where the do, where the doctors have actually had to take over back over their ordering because they were spending so much money in their offices on on dental supplies that, that it was out of control. So they they will take it back over, get control of it, and then and then give it to uh, empower someone that works for them to do it. But many many times the doctors are totally unaware of their cost structure. You know they. In my in, in my world, so a, we we take out a tooth and we do take out a tooth and we do uh, bone grafting. So if if we take the tooth out and we do bone grafting, we'll put we'll put bone banked bone in the socket. We'll put xenograft on the facial and we'll cover it with a membrane. Well, you need to know that each one of those little packets you open is one hundred and fifty dollars worth of dental ex supply expense. You need to know those things. And many dentists don't have any idea of the cost structure of their procedures. And so they, they, they end up being a little disappointed then when, when, when the financial aspect of their practice doesn't work out. So what we try to do is just offer the opportunity. I'll, I'll have a conversation with the doctor and I tell them, we're here for you. We'll, I'll answer any question you send me by email or telephone. I said, I see patients all day, so you may have to leave me a message. And then I'll get back with them. I mean, I do emails all day long. And um, and it, it's it's most doctors are very appreciative of what we're trying to do for for the private practitioner. Um, every now and then we'll, we'll come across someone who who uh, just is a little more combative with us on it. And I tell them, I go, look, only use us if we can save you money. If we can't save you money, don't use us. It's that simple. Uh, you know, if if you can get the deal at home, get it at home. And Howard, how, what you're saying back to um, you not having any idea of what of what the supplies are and placing supply orders. Basically what the, what the dentist has to do is the dentist is the, as the decision maker has to say, okay, we're going to try these guys out. So Jan, you're my assistant. I want you to try these guys out. You know, Dr. Offit will talk with you and we'll get everything sorted out um, as far as how we're going to use their products. Okay. I want to, I want to switch gears because the bottom line is, um, you know, supplies, you said supplies should be, what, what was the range you said dental supplies should be? About 5%. Okay, 5%. But what's the range of labs? What's the uh, range of labs? Double. Yeah, absolutely. Re labs, I mean, if you can save on labs, you can, you can save. So, so, so I don't want to talk anymore about supplies, which is only 5. Let's switch to labs, which is 10. Would, sure. you, agree, would you agree that, that su supplies are about 5% for the average dental office and labs are uh, about 10? I, I, I see the range of labs if they're massively into CIRAC, CAD CAM, it's down closer to seven. If they do a lot of crown and bridge, it can be as high as 12. And then right. also the other thing I, I want to point out is that a lot of dentists think their supply bills are, are too high when they're actually not because they move into CIRAC and they start buying all these Emacs blocks and that's on their supply bill. But when they were taking polyvinyl and sent it to a lab, 
that was all in their lab bill. So like in my today's dental, we put all of our Emacs blocks in our lab category. We don't put that in the supply category because it's, it's crown and bridge. But anyway, so, so the range of labs is twice as much as supply. So switch gears and start talking about labs. How, 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 how can a dentist call the SynergyDentalPartners.com and, and what's, how can they start saving money on labs? Well, we're going to, just like Dr. Oppa was saying, uh, the same as we're going to enroll you with Darby and everybody else, we're going to enroll you with our two lab partners. And our two lab partners are going to save you, you know, about 37% on, on lab costs. So if we, can say, if we can save you those kind of percentages there on something that is probably closer to 12%, then you're, you're going to achieve greater savings than if you just got your supplies under control. But the whole pool of money is so much bigger. That, that, that it's, it, it really is quite substantial to the, um, to, to the, to the bottom line. You know, and, and, and we, lose, we lose track sometimes of, of what you're trying to do is take this to, to, to below the line. You know, you want to take this down to your bottom line, the, your savings, because, you know, if you, if you can save 25% up top, all of a sudden that extrapolates quite nicely to the bottom line for your for your personal income it's, or funding your pension plan or educating your children in college. I mean, there's a, n- numerous things you can you do with the money, but but doctors have to realize that you've got to save the money above the line to get it down below the line you know, on your balance sheet. And that's a that's a that's a huge concept that that, that we don't stress enough. Um, so I, I want to know on uh, Prudential or the other lab, which was DDS Lab. Some of the labs I'm hearing about are um, if you um, orally scan your impression and they receive a digital oral scan, they don't have to pay a human being uh, to pour up a model, trim a dye, blah blah blah. Do the, do, do these labs do any of that? Or are they into that? Yeah. Or what? What are your thoughts on that? Yes, everybody we work with has the ability to to accept digital scans because you know. Let's face it, digital scans are the future. P-R-U-D-E-N-T-A-L-L-A-B.com. Oh, Prudential, Prudential Lab. Prudential, Prudential Lab. Lab. Prudentiallab.com. Okay. This is okay, there, a, there we go. Okay, so, th- so, so pr- this is actually a very exciting company. That, that's our, it's, our newest, it's our newest vendor partner. We uh, launched two weeks ago. With we them. launched them two weeks ago, and um, folks have been very happy. They're actually offering doctors a, a kind of a – try us out type opportunity uh, to, that will save them significant amount of money. And so it, you know, it, you know, doctors should check it out and, and see and, you know, and, and always be skeptical. You know, I mean, you have to always, always be skeptical. Make sure it's what delivering the quality you want and make sure that it's in the timely fashion you want and, and, uh, and, and, and have the opportunity. And then the DDS lab, uh, which, which one, if someone's never tried either, which one would you recommend? They're both great. They're both great. They bring different. They bring different products to the table in terms of one is all domestic. The other uh, uses some has has partially domestic and partially offshore. So yeah, I think you have to you have to look at it and see what what company is gives you the the product and the service that you want for your patient. And um, you know we 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 like both of the companies, and so we wouldn't. Uh, we wouldn't say, oh, this one, this is better than that, or that's better than this. The doctor has to look at it, evaluate it, which one is the company they feel comfortable with, which is the company they want to, they like their products and their service. I mean, it's like anything else. Which works best in your model? Yeah, you know, if your model is... And the other out- one is DDS Lab? Did you yes. find that? DDS Lab? Yeah. And Howard, actually, Just right D- now... DDS Lab. That, that's in right. China. But right now we're actually work. What we have found is that some of the some of the the national labs uh, doctors are more comfortable with labs that they're familiar with, and so we're we're actually branching out a little bit in the laboratory area to add some partners that we should be announcing sometime in the near future for more to to give them more regional names that uh, that doctors recognize. So uh, I, I want to go back. I want to end. Uh, we only got five more minutes. I, w- I want to go back to uh, Richard and the fact that um, the ADA recognizes nine specialties, and you went into perio. That one changed the most. I mean, from '87 to 2015, when I got school, was scaling and root planing, and 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 hemisection, mo- lower molars in half, and all this, and 
seems like most of those periodontal surgeries and the endodontics, you're an endodontist, apicoectomies, yeah. it's kind of like perio surgery on three rooted teeth and apicoectomies on felled root canals. It's kind of kind of gone now. Now now you just pretty much go straight to titanium. Is that is that an oversimplification or true? Well, I think I think the strata, I think you have to strike a balance in it. I mean, there's no I I think you're exactly right. You know, when when I have had this conversation with with a doctor today at lunchtime where I was saying that the the percentage of of the things that I learned in my specialty program, I mean, at the University of Pennsylvania, phenomenal, wonderful place, awesome teachers, it was great. State of the, I mean, state of the world, state of the art. What I learned there, what I do in my a given day is a, what I learned there is about a third of it, 25% of it. Everything other than that, the other 75% of what I do all day long, I've learned since then. And I think your point is, is straight on is that, is that it, we, have to, we, we have to be able to evolve. And I think periodontics has evolved tremendously. And um, and I think it's it's there still is the fundamental need to keep people's teeth in their heads. People still get gum disease, guys, and we got and and you know they just have a little periodontal disease. You still need a tooth crown lengthen. You still need some attached gingiva added to a tooth. So those fundamental skill sets, those things are are still there. And you know, yes, maybe the techniques changed a little bit, but, but so you, you're you're you've been you've been doing this for several decades and a lot of these listeners haven't done it for five years i mean when when right. fans send me an email they're they're usually five years out of school or less i mean really that's about that's probably 90 percent right. of what i get so help her out um apicoectomy or extract and do an implant i i think you have to look at i think you have to look at the case and there's so many variables on it um the, the i did i've done a lot of apicoectomies I, I haven't practiced endo in many many years i would probably do an apico if i thought i had a good prognosis and with the rest of the tooth um i i don't think i i just like i crown lengthen teeth i, I do a lot of crown lengthening all every day um i don't i don't go to the the forceps I, you know right away i think you know so those things are are, are, are important for for a practice and and what, what the dentist needs to be able to do is decide um is if we can do a successful apico does that extend? Does that extend the the, the, the the usefulness of the tooth for the future? And and if that's the case, then you do it. You know, and and uh, uh, there's something live on there, Howard. I'm not sure what that, that that's is. That's my apicoectomy that's gone bad. Yeah, yeah. It looks <laughs> that's like my canine, of, that's my canine tooth sticking out. It's gone you know, bad. Yeah, I, I didn't know that or some kind of mustache or something. But um, in any in any case, I think I think it's case selection. <laughs> case selection on both periodontics and endodontics. Okay, I, I've only got you for two more minutes. Sorry, uh, Mustafa. Uh, Mustafa um, but I get this all the time. She tells me it, it doesn't make sense. This lady's losing all of her teeth from gum disease. So the periodontist is saying we're going to pull this tooth and put an implant. Well, then she's just going to get periimplantitis. I mean, she's got P. gingivalis in her mouth, and you pull the tooth. All you're going to do is take it from periodontal disease to periimplantitis. What is my periodontist trying to do to me? How would you answer that? Well, I don't necessarily think that, that that is always the case. I think in once we get you in the hands of a good periodontist, the periodontist's job is also to help maintain the rest of your existing dentition and to improve your oral health care to, to get, get you to the situation where your periodontal disease is stable and you're not going to get periimplantitis. You know, obviously, we're not going to just throw an implant into a situation and the surgeon walk away and not have any contact and just hope for the best. You know, we, we want you in the hands of the of a surgeon who's going to provide the adequate level of care for you to improve your oral health. The, 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 the walk away, Howard, the, this is a little bit of an editorial on my part. The walk away surgeon for implant dentistry is, is a real challenge. Um, because the, you know, implants get, have the same problems that teeth have. They, they crack, they fracture, they get periodontal disease, uh, periimplantitis, periodontal disease, bone loss. And, and, um, and it, it's a very much of a challenge when you, I see people every day that are in my practice that say that are there with periimplantitis. And I go, well, my really, I, I tell them, I go, my best suggestion is to go back to the surgeon. And they go, well, he doesn't treat that. And so, you know, all, you know, so, so all of a sudden, the, the, the periimplantitis cases are, are all in the periodontal offices, 
And and there's a lot of them. I mean, by done by good surgeons, good restorative people. There's a lot of peri implantitis, and and that's that's something that that on a whole nother podcast we could talk about in terms of how do you how do you manage that in in the dental practice and and uh, so it I, you know. But it is a team. I, 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 I would love to have an entire podcast on peri implantitis. So, but let me ask you this: I'm trying to I'm trying to pin you down like an attorney on a uh, on a trial. Would would implants replacing a mouth lost from dental decay last longer than implants placed in a mouth lost from gum disease? Yes. Yeah. Statistically, you're right. And I also believe that our, one, one our, of the limiting things was pre, as a history of peri, advanced periodontal disease. That's one of the the, the limitations to uh, ongoing implant success. So and, I, and, and, I, and I also and I also am very cynical about all the implant success rate that everybody's talking about. Cause when you dig deeper into those studies, it's always dental implants placed in people who lost their teeth from decay. And the implants are always in the anterior mandible and it's never implants replaced with people had gum disease in the maxilla. Would you right. agree it, or disagree with that? Oh uh, No, I think you're right. I, I mean, you know, you, if you look at the, I think you have to be very careful you know, listen to read referee uh, articles from referee journals. Make sure that that there's that there's that there's not a hidden agenda by the person uh, espousing the, the the data, because the implant dentistry is wonderful. It's maybe the most innovative thing you know in my entire career. And I and I finished dental school in 1979, so and it, it's definitely it's a wonderful thing. But but it, there are there are a lot of it needs to be an eyes wide open approach for the for the for the restorative dentist or the, the restorative dentist that's placing his own implants, because guys that are very guys and ladies that are very good surgeons that have, that have been doing it for careers are having problems, have problems with peri implantitis. It, it's it's there. So that so the, the the practitioner in private practice, the, especially the, the the restorative doctor that's placing his own implants needs to really gear in to how to manage that how to how do i maintain and manage my dental implant patients because and 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 it doesn't have to be with the periodontist it can be they can learn those skills themselves but it does take quite a bit of focus and i think we'll learn a lot more in 10 years you know right now the the in vogue thing is all on fours or all on four plus so we'll we'll see what happens in 10 years with these people who are losing all their teeth and then having implants placed and immediately loading these things it'll be it'll be very telling well you know what we um we put up 350 online c course on dental town and they've been viewed over i think last i saw was like 575,000 times because the old model when we got out of school was you close down your office you travel to a convention you sit in the convention all day and the new model is you just sit there and watch it on your ipad on your couch and, and also i think the dentists like it in our segments not all day lectures because think of all the all day lectures you've gone to where after the afternoon break, half the class didn't even come back. How many times have you seen that in your life? I mean, you're fried. Whereas, yeah. but if you ever can uh, know anybody that can put together an online C course on how to manage uh, peri implantitis, uh, that would be a rocking hot uh, video because it's because uh, we're just placing more and more and more and more implants. So these peri implantitis cases are starting to stack up. I'll follow. I'll follow up with you on that because we're actually doing a, a presentation in January. We're having um, a doctor come in from Mayo Clinic who has a quite a, a significant academic academic uh, record, and we we are going to have a two hour evening for dental hygienists with the practitioners that we work with, to um, where we're bringing in the speaker and going to have their it's for their hygienists. Because they're the interface with the general dentist with these implant cases, and we want them to be geared so that they can identify the issues and advise their doctor when they see them. Um, and so we're, we're we're focused on that. I can follow up with you on that, and if we wanted to video it for you, we could probably yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah, you could yeah. video it and have it sponsored by the Synergy Dental Partners. <laughs> that, yeah, <laughs> hey, that's we're, we're That'd be something, up. but I gotta I gotta talk to Dr. Shakan about that, and he's not all agreeable on that kind of stuff. So, all right, well, hey, gentlemen, thank you so much for spending an hour with me and all our listeners. I think you guys are amazing. Uh, you guys are great. Thank you for all that you do for dentistry.
Thank you. Thank you, Howard. And sorry, my uh, my cat had to make a cameo. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> All Not right, bye-bye. Uh -huh. I appreciate it.